Today, we're talking about design, going from sketch all the way to reality. At Initialized, we funded a company called Cron. They're building the best calendar experience that you always wish you had. Google and Apple, they have unlimited resources, but they still give you a bug-filled, frustrating experience. I've worked with hundreds of designers and Raphael is one of the top designers I've ever worked with. He did amazing work at Flipboard, the MIT Media Lab. How can I tell he's among the very best? Because he thinks about the very last mile, that last bit, sanding down all of the sharp edges. So today is about looking at what it takes to create the best user experiences in the world from a true practitioner, from sketch to prototype code to reality. This is Cron. Let's get started. Raphael, thanks so much for hanging out with us and showing me really the first step in how any designer should start, which is actually the sketchbook, actually paper and pen. Yeah. Um, which I have to confess, like as a designer, I always started with pixels. So this is this part is extra interesting to me because look at this thing. <laughs> it's like, it's, uh, you know, beautiful on its own. We're looking at new Cron Core. Um, you know, what's going through your head as you just start, you know, working on this? It looks like this is actually even the bones and framework for the world's best calendar app. What could be the top level nav and totally and it looks like there are a couple different options here even. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I love sketching personally um, because it's so low commitment to just start on paper, exploring ideas, be it for um, an entire new product or a feature within like an existing product. And I think uh, sketching can be great for not just designers, but really anyone um, because anyone can, you know, draw basically, right? We all drew as, as kids. And so um, when I explore uh, ideas, usually this is kind of the first step. And you see like it varies a lot kind of um, what this looks like. Uh, sometimes like entire kind of UI components. Sometimes I'm really thinking through like a detailed uh, problem. And then one of the important things is that it helps me to think and explore options, but also it's great kind of to snap a picture, share it with a team. And so it's a way to communicate. So sketching to me is exploration and communication. I mean, one of my favorite things about Cron is as a designer founder, you found a way to bring just sort of all of the, like the last mile, sort of the 10,000 paper cuts that most products sort of subject you to. And you're sort of, uh, thinking about it at such a deep level that, you know, even at the level of something like this, where there's adaptive precision, like where your mouse clicks will have an effect on whether you snap to the, you know, hour marker or the 15 minute marker. Um, you know, what's going on here? Yeah. It's like there, this is actually about feedback for that adaptive precision. That's right. Yeah. So usually when you kind of imagine like the standard calendar grid, um, before you click, you don't really know yet where like a chip, an event chip is going to be created. Um, so uh, oftentimes you're kind of off by 30 minutes, right? Because you just were one pixel above where the engineer kind of drew the, the invisible line. So here I'm just kind of thinking a little bit through options, different options. How could you kind of minority report style kind of know before you click? where the event will be created. Um, so this is something that's not in the product yet. And I just started to uh, explore options here. Um, so that's kind of what we're seeing on the, on the, on the left page and still a work in progress. Um, but this started a while ago in the sketchbook and is an idea that we're now putting in software. Oh, that's awesome. And I guess, you know, one of the things that's really interesting about being at this paper and pencil stage is that um, it's really about no judgment, right? Which is actually a really important design principle if people aren't designers, that's like one of the first things they should really sort of open their mind up to. Like this is the uh, improv stage, like an improv comedy. Yeah. There's no such thing as no, it's always yes and. Yes, totally. I love that you're, you're saying that because I think, um, so sometimes I'll, I'll kind of ask um, in a design process, I'll ask you know, everyone to participate and for other designers, but also you know, engineers, uh, PMs to also sketch. And sometimes I'll put a time limit. It's like within the next five minutes, everyone come up with like eight sketches. And oftentimes what you find is that sketch number seven or eight is actually not any worse 
than your first idea. And so what that tells us is the more you explore, basically the be more better ideas you have. Um, and so initially it's totally about what we call in the design process, design thinking, deferring judgment. So ideas from everyone and as many as possible. So go broad, not deep yet. For someone who wants to do this type of design at the paper level, like what would you recommend? It looks like, you, you know, I've never seen these pens before. <laughs> yeah, so so here's what I use. Um, it's usually a sketchbook because otherwise like loose pages, I, it's cool to like put them up in an office environment. But here um, I have everything together and then I just snap pictures and share them on Slack, especially these days, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so, so these are pens that I uh, use. You see everything is very black and white um, and uh, just with like use color to highlight maybe a few interactions, but that that's it. Everything else is just about the form and the function. Um, and so, yeah, I use these Copic pens. Um, they're my personal favorite. They're like fantastic pens um, made, made in, in, in Japan um, to kind of just quickly like render things. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to be like that. So this is just my practice. I've been doing it for a very long time, but I think everyone can, you know, become visual and can draw a stick figure basically and add some texture to an idea. I mean, it sounds like one of the key things to keep in mind is um, it really is like a sketch. If you've ever taken a, a drawing class, the first part that people tell you to start with is actually the high level form, right? Like you, literally you're drawing, you know, using pencil, a, a sketch of what it might be. Yeah. Is that sort of one of the processes that you use? It's like, you know, to feel, see how it feels and then like successively do more and more higher fidelity options. <laughs> So I think that's actually where I leave usually the medium of sketching yeah. and yeah. go to a design tool. Awesome. Um, and, and you know, for sketching, you can really, it can be as simple as if you, for example, have an idea about like a, like a I don't know, like a new um, profile um, view in, in your app or whatever. Um, you know, that is kind of like an idea, but then like, you know, just, Make make it visual, like add like a little you know avatar. Maybe it looks like like this here, um, and then suddenly like you brought this idea to life, and really everyone can and, and should be uh, doing that. And you can see how you're feeling about it, and if you don't like it, you make a new version. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's very cheap to just continue the next one. And then once you have these explorations, you're on to the next step. Oftentimes, you know, people say design is not only how it looks, but also how it works, mm -hmm. right? So I would kind of take um, that to one step further and say, design is not just how it looks, how it works, but also how it's built. And so certain things I cannot explore, you know, in, for example, a prototyping tool or, or certainly not sketching. And so what I personally like to do is jumping into code, like the actual medium that the, you know, software is gonna take shape in and prototype in the actual medium because only, only like that you can really explore certain nitty gritty details. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, so in this, in this particular case, we're looking at, um, some prototypes that I built usually just with rocks and sticks, really like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, that's it. No framework, nothing. Okay, so here we're looking at um, a prototype where you see kind of a familiar grid from calendar. And when you uh, hover with the mouse, really nothing happens. But when you pause to potentially like, click and drag an event, you see that you get this indicator. And this is one of the variants um, that we saw in the sketchbook earlier that I kind of start to explore in code, like how could this, you know, work and you can, you can kind of use the mouse and um, uh, just kind of land somewhere. Maybe you kind of like go quickly to another area and then you land somewhere. It's like, ah, this is where the event is going to appear. So you can really at this point feel how the interaction, you know, sort of what, what does that tell the user? What do I expect to happen? when I click here and the, you know, this gray line, for instance, at this moment really indicates, it sets expectations for what, what will happen. Like if I click and drag now, I'm going to start, um, at the hour mark, the for hour example, hour or 15, 15 minutes minute after, exactly. A and I love that you said feel, because so often internally, when we build something, um, and for example, uh, a teammate will ask, um, you know, will this work that and that way? And then my response will usually, you'll, you'll, you'll feel it. Yeah, and, that, and that's sort of what the job of the designer is actually, to sort of feel empathy for the user because they're, when done right, are millions, if not, you know, potentially billions of people who are going to feel what you feel in that moment. 
Totally, yeah. And it's also, you know, there's certainly kind of like a designer, curator, I have an opinionated take on something angle, but also really, really important to test with users because I might think something works and is cool and obvious. And then, you know, I talk to five people and four, four of them is like, what, the, what, what are you talking about? Like, this makes no sense. I think one thing that really blows me away uh, when I, you know, meet founders like you is that to be able to go from the design step all the way into the code is actually very remarkable and um, there's this possibly apocryphal story about Steve Jobs where when they were actually designing the Mac um, he sort of drove his engineers crazy because he you know was trying to get the right feel for uh, you know the size of buttons and how much shading would you put on uh, you know, a dialogue box and things and the like the corner that. radius yeah, famously, yeah. right? And so he drove them absolutely crazy with like, oh, change it to this, change it to that. And then I think one of the uh, top developers at the time just made a uh, slider tool that was sort of like the first no code visual builder <laughs> yeah. to help. To, and it, he just gave it to Steve and he was like, you figure out the settings and then we'll just use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it's interesting because um, you know, in that case, Steve was the person who wanted to feel and it was the engineer who had to sort of implement and deal with it. But um, that highlights where it's so much more powerful for you to be able to be in the sketch and then in the design and then also in the code, like making it feel the way you want it to feel. And I yeah. feel like being a designer and engineer. It's just that's just so powerful. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's fun to be able to kind of really bring um, things that you put in a design tool and then really bring it to life um, without having to uh, bother an engineer every time. So I, I really like being able to explore some ideas with code. Um, uh, but you know, like like actual engineering is like a whole other discipline. Thinking about drop network connections and caching and performance. So these are baby baby prototypes and a very specific purpose. Um, the, the Steve Jobs uh, story that you mentioned, yeah. um, you know, the wiggles when the icons wiggle oh, yeah. um, in the iPhone, mm -hmm. original iPhone had that, like that exact wiggle. Um, Steve Jobs was never happy with it. And so he drove the engineers, like you were saying, with the Macintosh yeah. crazy about like that exact wiggle. And so the engineer was like, okay, I can't get it right. Like every Steve review, like I'm not getting it right. Let me just build, you know, he can flip the page or flip the springboard, um, the home screen. And he has like a bunch of sliders there. Like this is the angle, this is the, you know, repetition. Um, then another slider maybe for like how quick it bounced, etc. And then, you know, Steve would go there and like, so he, he, like perfectly gonna set the sliders yeah. and then give the phone back to the engineer and the engineer read these values and now like put them as constants into the into the uh, code base, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. of the original so iOS. You just like kept the, doing that over and over again. The Steve from constants. From the original to OS 10 yeah. and so on. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. So now we're into the third part of bringing something from a sketch all the way to reality. This is the reality part. <laughs> Um, and then what are we looking at? This is actually Google Calendar and how they do time zones. Yeah, so this is, you know, a simple control where you select um, a certain time zone, like typical list that's, that, you know, you have seen a hundred times and used, you know, thousands of times probably, right? Um, pretty standard. Um, nothing seems, you know, all that wrong with it, except I can't, you know, type and go to like, you know, Zurich, for example, or something. Like I have to go and kind of know which offset it is, etc. Now. Um, jumping over to uh, cron, for example, when you add a new time zone here, and I can add as many as I want for distributed teams, etc. Um, where did you grow up, Gary? Oh, Fremont, California. Okay, so I think of Gary, you know, of like Fremont, like boom, um, not as Gary in GMT minus seven. And so boom, we just jumped to, you know, the San Francisco time zone or LA time zone, um, GMT minus seven. And so what you saw there was like this little control where, you know, I interacted with it for a split second that just typed Freeman and did the right thing. Um, but if we kind of look at this control, um, it feels uh, very different and more powerful, more empowering and quicker than what we were looking at earlier. And so um, I can kind of quickly show you like, you know, going from sketching to, uh, interaction design to actually UI design. Like what are the little tricks that designers use to make, you know, a simple control, but if used, you know, hundreds of times actually add up like small differences that make it better. Yeah, it's the little things that really matter at this level.
Yeah. And so, uh, okay, so, so this is kind of what, what's in the product, right? Um, the way it works. Um, but let's look at um, here. So design tool, um, we're in Figma. And um, let's look at... This is how Google does it. Yeah, exactly. So this is kind of like, nothing is wrong with this, right? It's um, like a standard time selector. Um, but let's start doing some cleanup here. So one, create some visual hierarchy. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to split out um, the detail uh, label here. Uh, we can get rid of it uh, here. Boom. And so you already kind of see by splitting it out, it creates some visual hierarchy. Um, we can use some, some color uh, to create, create contrast, like this was all white. Here I'm using a, a detail color that I've predefined. And here I'm now gonna go into um, another uh, kind of text default color that I have um, defined uh, here. And so, oops. And so here we kind of see like, okay, so now we have like a light gray, a dark gray. Um, it starts to create some, uh, some, some hierarchy. Also removed the paralysis because they're very repetitive here. And so when you kind of do these small tweaks, we go from, by creating visual hierarchy, we go from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Already like a little, little better. Um, let's take it up a notch. So um, step two, um, I'm going to really like sweat some typographic details. So for example, note how it's kind of jagged here, oh, yeah, totally. right? And, and this is also so, you know, in the original one, it's kind of like jagged. And it's because um, the plus is wider than like the just yeah. kind of, you it's know, hyph fixed with font, hyphen. Right? Yeah, exactly. Font. So, so let's take this here and let's actually delete that. And then on Mac OS, you can hit control command space and you get into this, um, what people maybe recognize as the emoji selector, oh, yeah. but I use it all the time for design. Huh. So for example, if I, you know, this here was, it's just, if I press the hyphen on the keyboard, this is what you get. Unicode point, you know, it shows all of that. But if you type in minus, you can actually get uh, an actual, um, so it's not the hyphen minus, not the minus symbol, it's the minus sign. Yeah. This is like the, the mathematical, minus, yeah. not just like the, the hyphen, right? It's different Unicode. Yeah. And so if I insert that, note how um, how this is now the same width as the plus. Oh, interesting. Right? Subtle. Yeah. And then another thing we're going to do is use tabular figures. You mentioned like the monospace mm -hmm. uh, font. So we're not quite going to use a monospace font, but what we're going to use is tabular figures. It's just like a fancy way of saying fixed with numbers, basically. Oh, interesting. Um, and so, I didn't know that was a different yeah. distinction than using monospace. Yeah. So here um, we have now that. So no, I'm going to go back. And that's control C, of, uh, control, yeah. For an Excel-like experience, you need to use... Tabular figures all line up. Yeah. So because a one is much narrower than like a zero, right? right? Um, but here, the one takes up the same width as the zero. And so, so this is kind of what we um, did here. Could we toggle back and forth um, so you see the difference here, right? It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. Yeah, and so if we apply this to all... Um, oh, another thing we're going to do here. Um, this, is just, um, this is just, you know, space. Uh, and then minus again, and then space. However, um, we're gonna use, um, g give it some more room. So we're gonna go back into this little selector here and we're gonna give it um, a, so if I type in space, there's actually many, many spaces, I right? Um, so we're gonna give it a, an N space, takes up the width of an N unit. Um, and then the, uh, I'm gonna do that here as well. And then the uh, minus here um, looks a little, a little small now, a little insignificant to kind of, you know, tease the time zone name and the city um, apart. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a uh, N dash. So um, let's see here, I'm going to use uh, an N dash. And so this is, this is what it looks like now. So if we apply this to all of them, what it looks like now is this here, all straight lines, as you see I can here. Breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're kind of like, okay, so we have British Summertime London, GMT plus, plus one, right? So, so it makes it very easy to scan. And then, you know, kind of uh, final, final step is um, add some, some more kind of uh, visual hierarchy with sections, make it functional with uh, this kind of recent section. We have uh, kind of primary or priority time zones here, often used time zones. And then the whole, you know, long list um, that you can not only scroll through in a visual nice way, but also you can um, filter it yeah. by just typing, uh, you know, time zone aberrations, time zone offsets, popular cities, airport codes, and even some Easter eggs. Uh, For example, cool. try typing like Gotham City and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> 
I'm not sure if that's San Francisco or New York, but it could be either of those. <laughs> <You'll see. laughs> I'll try it out. Um, this is so cool just because, uh, you know, you can feel these things, but just to see the level of detail and thought put into every pixel, it's just, I don't know, it's absolutely remarkable, right? To see from one end to the other. I mean, this is what it means to sand down all the edges to sort of, you know, a platonic ideal of design perfection in a way, at the pixel level anyway, but it's not just how it looks, it's how it works, right? These are all incredibly functional changes that, um, you come to really expect in well-designed things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really impressed, man. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's fun. I love, I mean, I, I love my job. Like I get to, you know, make things better for, 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 for myself because I love those you know, details and getting it just right and putting in the extra mile. Um, but then the even more rewarding part is that once you made it one software, you know, it's just like, it goes out to everyone and everyone can benefit from these small improvements. That, that's, that's dope. So Dude, whenever I can kind of push an update and I know like, oh, you'll, you'll get it and yeah, everyone yeah. else, that's, that's awesome. So this has been just really cool to see the level of detail that you've put in. Uh, from the sketchbook all the way to the actual finished product. And Cron is something that is now going into private beta. So you can go to cron.com right now and sign up to join the list. And you could be one of the first people who gets access to basically how calendars should be. Yeah, we're, we're trying to reimagine um, the, the calendar for the modern, modern age. And uh, I'm super passionate, the whole team is super passionate about this. Um, we want to live in a world where everyone makes the most of their time. Um, super important. I think there's a you know, bunch of kind of important things you have in life, health that you have, um, love, relationships, etc., and and time. And why is it so so precious, right? Because it's the one that's non-renewable. Um, you know, you can get healthy again, you can rebuild relationships, but time, like this moment that we have here right now, Gary, is going to be gone forever. We cannot bring it back. And we chose to spend it the way we're spending it right now. And everyone chooses kind of how they spend their moments. And so building you know the software that basically a lot of people run their lives by and reimagining it for the kind of next generation um, of productivity software i'm super excited about the whole team um, is excited about moving the world a little closer to a place where everyone makes the most of their time thank you so much for bringing this craft up to the next level Thank, thanks, Gary. Super uh, fun to work together. And I've been really enjoying kind of jamming on some design things. Hopefully yeah, people, cool. yeah, yeah, can, can learn something, pick something up, follow the journey. So this is from sketch all the way to the reality. That's right. Good stuff, man.